A general anesthetic is a substance that causes unconsciousness and pain relief. We can compare this to a local anesthetic, which causes pain relief or numbness, but does not cause unconsciousness. The very first general anesthetic used in medicine was an ether molecule. An ether molecule is a molecule that contains a carbon single bonded to an oxygen that is single bonded to another carbon. So this is our ether functional group. And the very first ether anesthetic was a molecule known as diethyl ether. Diethyl ether is a pretty small molecule. It uh, has CH3, CH2 that's attached to the oxygen, and on the other side of the oxygen, a CH2, CH3. And this was first reported used as an anesthetic in 1846. Prior to the introduction of diethyl ether as an anesthetic, doctors would induce unconsciousness in their patients by either hitting them really hard in the head, like literally just knocking them out, or uh, encouraging them to just drink themselves to unconsciousness. So the introduction of diethyl ether was great in terms of medicine because you know it replaced beating people in the head. It's also very safe for patients to use. There are no short-term or long-term uh, harm associated with the use of ether as an anesthetic, so it's safe, and it's also very easy for doctors to use to administer. Diethyl ether is just inhaled. It's a liquid, but it's really vapory, it has a lot of fumes to it. And all you have to do is just inhale the fumes um, and it puts you into a state of unconsciousness. So they would just like soak a rag with diethyl ether and then you just kind of put that in front of the patient's head, in front of their face, and they would inhale those fumes and just um, be put into a state of unconsciousness. There were a couple of disadvantages to using diethyl ether. Um, number one, probably the biggest one, is that it's very flammable, like very flammable. Not just the liquid itself, but the gases or the fumes that come off the liquid are extremely flammable. Not exactly a great characteristic for use in an operating room. Also, diethyl ether was known to cause a lot of nausea in their patients. And nausea is something that's, you know, relatively characteristic with anesthetic in general, general anesthetics. Um, but the diethyl ether nausea is just, it's a lot more than what we would experience with modern anesthetics. We don't use diethyl ether as, an, as a general anesthetic anymore, but we still use ethers as general anesthetics. As a class of molecules, the ether functional group just in general makes a really good anesthetic. One example of a current ether that is used as an anesthetic is a molecule called isoflurane, isoflurane, which is also known by a brand name forane. This substance was introduced in the late 70s. It's structurally pretty similar to diethyl ether. It just has some halogens on it and a one fewer carbon atom. So you can see there's just chlorine, there's a few fluorines on there, and there's one less carbon atom on the left-hand side as I've drawn it. Uh, isofluorine can be used to cause unconsciousness in a patient, but mostly it is used to maintain unconsciousness. So it would put a person into unconsciousness, but generally it is not the substance that is used to induce unconsciousness, it's just used to maintain unconsciousness. And this is because one of the side effects of isoflurane is that it is very irritating to the airway. So it's better for patients to be given isoflurane after they're already unconscious, so they're not aware of this irritation.